Hello friends, Miss Tubbs here, and I have one more book to share with you this week. This is called The Truly Terribly Horrible Sweater That Grandma Knit. And I want you to think a little bit about the, A Bad Case of Stripes by David Shannon. And um, even though these are very different stories, there are some similarities and some things that you can definitely compare between the two. Okay, here we go. Only three more days until my birthday, Cameron Gerard thought as he raced in the door from soccer practice and kicked off his cleats. That's when he saw it. Grandma Susan's present had come in the mail. Cameron picked up the package and shook it. What could it be? A new video game? A remote control car? Maybe it was a cool blinking light for his bicycle. Cameron could hardly wait to open his birthday present from his Grandma Susan. She always gave the best gifts. Finally, the day arrived. Cameron flew out of bed and down to the kitchen where his mother and father and baby sister were waiting for him. On his plate was a big stack of pancakes with candles sticking out of the top. Isn't that a fun idea? Have you ever had that, friends? I wish this would be my best birthday ever. He closed his eyes and blew out the candles in one big breath. Can I open Grandma Susan's presents now? If that's what you want, Mom said. Cameron tore off the paper and opened the box. A yellow envelope lay on top of the tissue paper. Read the card first, Mom told him. Inside was Grandma Susan's note. This is a very special gift for a very special boy. Happy birthday. Holding his breath, Cameron opened the box. It wasn't a video game. It wasn't a remote control car. It wasn't a blinking light for his bike. It was a sweater. A truly, terribly, horrible sweater. Oh, Cameron, his mother said, look what Grandma knit for you. It's almost like the one she made for your baby sister. Cameron did not want a sweater for his birthday, even if his Grandma Susan had knitted it. His mother held it up for him to see. It had red, green, yellow, blue, and orange stripes. Even worse, it had big buttons. If his friends saw him wear this, they would laugh. It was a truly, terribly horrible sweater, and Cameron was never, ever going to wear it. The next day, Cameron called his dog Scout into his bedroom and closed the door. Carefully, he slipped Scout's front legs into the sleeves of his birthday sweater and buttoned the rest around Scout's middle. It rained all night, and Scout loved rolling in puddles. I'll never have to wear this sweater now, Cameron whispered to his dog. On Cameron's way out the door, his dad stopped him. Whoa, Cameron, isn't that your new sweater? It's to keep you warm, not Scout. Besides, the backyard is a muddy mess. Slowly, Cameron took the sweater off Scout. Then, one chilly morning a few weeks later, as his mother was making his lunch, she said, this would be a perfect day for you to wear your new sweater to school. Cameron went to his room and pulled out the sweater. He buttoned the big buttons. But it was a truly, terribly horrible sweater, and Cameron was never, ever going to wear it. So before he even reached the bus stop, Cameron stuffed his birthday gift in his backpack where none of his friends would see it. Do you see how it keeps repeating that part about the sweater and him never wearing it? Just before Thanksgiving, Cameron had another chance to get rid of the sweater. I'm running some things down to the church for the rummage sale, Mom called to him. Cameron, is there anything you want to donate? Cameron had an idea. Yes, he shouted back. He grabbed the sweater, bolted down the stairs, and raced out to the car. Here, Mom, he said, and tossed his bundle into the trunk. His mom pulled out of the driveway, and Cameron smiled. That birthday sweater was gone for good. What do you think is going to happen? But when Mom came home, she was carrying the sweater. 
Look what I found mixed in with the rummage sale stuff. Thank goodness I saw it in time. Dragging his feet, Cameron carried the sweater to his room. He buried it in the bottom of his closet next to his bike helmet. It was a truly terribly horrible sweater, and Cameron was never, ever going to wear it. Cameron knew his mom would find the sweater eventually, so he came up with another idea. One night, when everyone was asleep, he sneaked down to the kitchen carrying the sweater. He spread it out carefully and opened the refrigerator. Take this sweater. He squirted rivers of red ketchup then added globs of goopy mustard. Finally, he scooped on piles of slimy mayonnaise. Then he tossed the sweater in a laundry basket. The next morning, as his mother was leaving for the grocery store, he heard a shriek. Cameron, his mother yelled, what happened to your sweater? Oh, Cameron said, trying not to smile. I got hungry last night and made myself a snack. Your special sweater is a mess, his mother told him. Sorry, Mom, Cameron said. And he was sorry. Sorry he didn't like the sweater. Sorry that Grandma Susan had gone to so much trouble to knit such a terribly, truly terribly horrible birthday gift. That night at dinner, the sweater was folded and lying on his chair. Every single stain came out, Mom said happily. Grandma Susan would have been heartbroken if, broken if anything happened to this sweater. Baby Mia giggled and smashed peas into her hair. Cameron hadn't thought about that. He didn't want to make Grandma sad. Still, it was a truly, terribly horrible sweater, and Cameron was never, ever going to wear it. In December, as Cameron was helping his dad with the Christmas decorations, his mother told him the news. Grandma Susan is coming. She'll be here Saturday and stay with us until after Christmas. We're all going to this train station to pick her up. Mom looked directly at him. And Cameron, she'll want to see you wearing your sweater. Cameron was excited to see Grandma Susan. She liked the same board games he did and she let him read to her. Plus, she clapped really loudly when she watched him shoot hoops in the driveway. It would almost be worth wearing the truly terrible sweater just to be with her. So he put the sweater on when they went to pick her up at the train station. Hello, hello, Grandma waved as she spotted them. Grandma, Grandma, Cameron yelled and raced to her. Grandma Susan bent down and pulled him close. I'm so glad you like your sweater. You look so handsome in it. Cameron frowned as he stared down at the bright stripes and big buttons. How could he look handsome in a truly, terribly horrible sweater? There's Grandma in the train station, and there's Cameron running to her. The next morning, Grandma came into Cameron's room. The sweater was lying on the floor next to Scout. She picked it up and sat on the bed beside Cameron, spreading the sweater across his bedspread. Let me tell you about knitting this sweater for you, she said. Her finger traced the green stripe. As I knit these rows, I imagined I was at one of your soccer games, watching you race across the grass. I remember the time I saw you play. You kicked in the winning goal and everyone cheered. Cameron smiled. No one cheered louder than you, Grandma. And look at the blue stripe here. I chose that color because it's the same as your bicycle. Remember last summer when your dad took the off the training wheels? You were scared, but you pedaled all by yourself down the street for half a block. Then you phoned to tell me about it. Blue reminded me that you are going to go far in life. Cameron looked up at his grandma. Can you guess why I used the orange yarn? Grandma Susan asked. Cameron laughed. He knew why. Because I love oranges so much. His grandma nodded. I have never seen a little boy who ate more oranges than you. What about the yellow? He asked. His grandma put her arm around his shoulder. Yellow is the happiest color I know. 
I remember the day your mom and dad called to tell me they had a baby boy. They were so excited and happy. Your mom and dad waited a long time to have a baby. It didn't seem it would ever happen. And then you were born. You, Cameron, are the sunshine of all of our lives. Grandma hugged his mother tight. Grandmother tight. Red, of course, is the color of hearts, Grandma said. And you are always close to my heart, even when we're far apart. As Grandma bent to kiss the top of his head, Cameron looked again at the sweater she had knit. He thought about the hours Grandma had spent choosing yarn and then knitting. The birthday present was one of a kind, special, just like his grandma. Suddenly, the sweater didn't look truly terribly horrible anymore. It looked good. It looked like something Cameron would be proud to wear for a very long time. There he is in his sweater. That is the end of our book. There's a little like how to knit in the back of the book. Directions. <laughs> All right. See if you can retell this story to a friend or I mean to your learning coach or your um, brother, sister, somebody. And, um, and then try to compare and pair it and contrast it with a bad case of stripes. See if the characters have some similarities. All right. Thank you, friends.